Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where, as promised, we are in an encounter of Jewel. Just did the time warp, literally nothing else. So let's just hit the execute next node button because we do have this braking maneuver lined up to get us in position-ish for Bop. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, our ascending node is going to be like right here-ish. It's still going to be more efficient to burn at the ascending node, though, so we'll do this in two separate burns. Regarding the inclination change, that is. So this is going to be a relatively brief five-minute burn. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, gotta love interplanetary burns. Here we go. This will be happening pretty soon. We are currently off of any sort of time warp, so the burn will be happening right now, to be precise. I'm going to go ahead and physics warp the burn so that we don't have apparently a seven minute burn. That would have been awkward. But this way it'll be more like a two minute burn, which isn't so bad. So I mean, we're not perfectly circularized around Bop, but it's close enough. Bop is relatively eccentric, but the, the important thing to getting an encounter will be matching planes with it. And that's going to take some delta v. I think we've got enough, though. We're going to have, what, about 3,000 delta v left over? 3,200? Something like that? 3,300, actually, more like. Yeah, we should have plenty of delta v left for that, so that'll be great. We did, of course, tack on this extra X-16 fuel tank down here. So we have a little bit extra in the tank, specifically 720 fuel over the 2880 in the Jumbo 64. So that's a... What is that, like a, a quarter-ish? Yeah, I think that's exactly a quarter. Yeah, so that's 25% additional fuel. That should be plenty. We are now officially in orbit over Jewel, and we will be continuing this burn until we are in a better position for transferring to Bop. There we go. Crossing over the orbit of Pull with our Apoapsis now. And there we go. That is good enough. So let's go ahead and set as target Bop. And... 166 degrees. Ugh. Okay, so what that means is that we are going in the opposite direction as Bop. So at the apoapsis, I'm going to just go ahead and reverse our directionality. So I'm going to burn prograde a lot. That's going to use a lot of our fuel. Hmm... I mean, we're going to have to burn that much fuel any way we slice it, because if we get an encounter, we'll have to break the same amount. So we're going to have to pay that cost any way we slice it. Now, one thing I could do... is try to combine this with this burn, which that would be okay. We can burn right there, and then try to combine it here with our descending node, which is currently negative 14 degrees. So let's just go ahead and do this. 0 0.02. 0 0.03. 0 0.02 degrees is the best we can get. That's fine. So there's our inclination change as well as our directionality reverse. Let's go ahead and execute that node, which will be in 15 days, and will be, according to this, an eight minute burn. That's probably relatively accurate. And that'll allow us to transfer to Bop relatively easily, and I don't really care too, too much about going in perfectly, because this thing's got a bit of an inclination to it as well, and we're gonna have to try to match that. 
Ideally, the way to match that would be to have our apoapsis be at basically the same inclination when we go in. But we'll see if that's viable. I mean, it's viable. But we'll see how much I want to fiddle around with getting it. <laughs> okay, so this burn will be happening pretty much presently. I'm going to go ahead and physics warp for this burn, since it's going to be a 12-minute burn. Did not realize that we were going the opposite direction. If I had, I probably would have inverted our directionality when I was coming in with the interplanetary transfer burn. It would have been more efficient then. But, oh well. We've got the Delta V to do this, so it should be fine. Ish. <laughs> Takes a lot of Delta V to invert our invert our orbit over Joule. So let's just go ahead and get that over with. We have to pay the cost for making that mistake any way you slice it. So we might as well pay it now and combine it with our inclination. There we go. So we will be fl flipping our orbit momentarily right about now. Our orbit is now internal in Joule. And because we're changing our inclination at the same time, it's going to flip in kind of a dramatic fashion. <laughs> there we go. About halfway done with our flip. And now we're going to start pushing our orbit back out and embiggening our orbit as we approach our target inclination. And our periapsis height is pushing out and will almost be out of the Julian atmosphere. And now it is. Excellent. About another 800 delta V to go here. Of course, with this inclination change, I do think we've still got plenty of delta V in our nuclear tank, let alone our, uh, <laughs> let alone our electric tank, our xenon. This should be more than efficient. Efficient? Sufficient. That's the word I'm looking for. Excellent. So, we will be a bit eccentric here from the orbit that we're looking for. Our apoapsis will be a little closer than our periapsis. In fact, we could probably cut this a little early. Of course, our ascending and descending nodes changed substantially, which is why we can't perfectly match the inclination. But I'm going to go ahead and cut that now. And that way we're a little bit closer. Our orbit is a little more circular than or a little less circular, or a little off. Our orbit is still a little off. But our ascending and descending nodes are 0 0.4 degrees, which should be enough to do a Hohmann transfer. Uh-huh. That, uh... That doesn't help, Mechjub. That's really unhelpful. <laughs> Let's, uh, try that again. I mean, that's still pretty unhelpful, Mechjeb. I guess we'll do it manually. Okay, let's see when we get an encounter. Oops, that is not the direction I wanted. So let's just go ahead and do this. Well, we're close to the apoapsis right now. So let's go ahead and do it at the apoapsis and just drop our orbit down to be here. Target position at closest approach is there. So we are uh, going to need to wait to do this a little bit. I don't know why Mechjeb is completely and utterly failing that, but whatever. We are basically on opposite sides of the orbit currently. So I think we just need to warp around an orbit and see where we are. So let's go ahead and do that. Warp to here. Excellent. So we've got ourselves about 30 days to warp. 
We should be slowly catching up to Bop. Well, technically Bop is catching up to us. <laughs> Getting slightly further away right now. But after this orbit, we should, I think, be in a good position to do a transfer to target. I don't know why Mechjeb is not wanting to transfer to target right now, but whatever. Mechjeb has a lot of issues. We'll just let it do its own thing for right now. And in the meantime, we are on basically exactly opposite sides of the orbit as Bop. But we'll get there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop this warp. And let's take a quick peek at where we are in terms of encounters. So, retrograde. Okay, we are... Mm, we're about 25% apart right now. Let's see about if we wait a little bit longer and burn over this way. Okay. We're starting to get relatively close. I'm going to go ahead and do a full speed warp. And we'll do one more orbit. Okay. Let's see where we're at here. Mechjeb, are you feeling better? Can you, uh... Nope. Mechjeb is not feeling better. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and do a retrograde here then and see... Ooh, that's getting real close. That's getting very, very close. So let's go ahead and push it down over this way. Yeah, that's getting incredibly close. There's an encounter. Is it a good encounter? Well, it's going the wrong direction. So there's that. And it's in a pretty wacky inclination. So let's see about changing this inclination a little bit and reversing the directionality. Not that way. I want to go that way. That's nice. Okay, let's bring this down a bit and get pretty close to the inclination that we're looking for. That's a little too much down. Let's just sit here so that I can see a little bit better. Okay. And we'll go right about here. Our inclination is still going to be off, so we'll still have to change it, but that's pretty close. And we have the correct directionality, and that's only 86 meters per second. Let's do it. We have plenty of delta V to get this done. I have no idea why Mechjeb could not solve that problem, but whatever. <laughs> oh, Mechjeb. You're so awesome in concept. But in reality, you're mostly just a node executor. <laughs> Regardless, as a node executor, Mechjeb is excellent. And I do very, very much like not having to do the node execution. It doesn't make much sense, especially in unmanned probes, that I would have to manually execute nodes. So having Mechjeb do node execution is just fine. Now, obviously, we're still going to have to do a little bit of adjustment here. But that'll be completely fine. Let's see where Mechjeb's execution of this ends this up at. It should be basically bang on. And it... There it is. It is basically bang on. That's good enough. Okay. Okay. Our periapsis is slightly above that one. Great. I would like to do our breaking burn right here. Let's just... Whoa, that was too much. Hmm. Okay. Maybe not right here. Maybe, uh... Maybe right here instead. Yeah, that'll do. A little more retrograde... Yes, except we need to change the location of the burn slightly. Right about there, a little bit more retro. 
Okay. Where are we at in terms of actual solid numbers? This looks about right, but we've got some inclination differences. So, uh, close enough. We'll go ahead and do that. 101 meters per second. That's not too, too bad. So we'll just be able to change our inclination, and then it'll be pretty easy from there. We'll change our inclination right about here-ish, or maybe over here. <laughs> kind of depends on how long this burn actually takes and which direction we're going. We're going to be going this way. So this will actually be the node we'll burn at. Okay. Well, where is Bop exactly? Well, we should be right next to it. There it is. Hello, Bop. You're just a rock. And of course, we do have ourselves some science that we can grab. So let's go ahead and transmit a temperature scan, atmospheric pressure scan. We will do a mystery goo observation here since in space high is going to be all we're going to get with this thing. There we go. And let's do a gravity scan. Excellent. And we got the first flyby of BOP and the first scientific data from BOP. We'll get a few more milestones here as well. There we go. Excellent. Okay, so we will now go ahead and grab... Technically, the descending node is there. That's a little awkward. I think it's actually right here. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and try to match this inclination. Let me just do that. That is not the direction I was hoping for. Okay, inclination match would be right about... Here. And of course, we're going to have to change our apoapsis and periapsis a little bit, I think. I don't think that'll be close enough. But we'll do that after the inclination change. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. That would be close enough. 12.6 meters per second. Yeah, that should be close enough for contract completion right there. We have entered the first orbit of BOP. And we are just going to go ahead and complete this contract. So unless we have another contract that, that we're going to be doing over here in the Jewel system, the next thing that we're going to do is definitely going to be putting the satellite out here. Inserting it into these moons is a little awkward. Of course, BOP is the difficult one-ish. It's got the wacky inclination and the eccentric orbit, so that one is pretty much going to be the hardest orbital insertion that we're going to have. As far as landings go, I think the only moon of Jewel with an atmosphere is Lathe, so that'll be interesting. Okay. Do we get a contract? Yes. Contract complete. Fantastic. And I'm going to go ahead and call that orbit good enough. That's pretty much all I'm looking to do there. So let's head on back to the Space Center. And let's see if there's another contract. If there is, we'll probably do that. If there isn't, then we'll put that satellite in the large orbit around Jewel. Hmm. Science data from space around Duna. Well, that's easy. <laughs> Surface outpost on BOP. No thanks. Flag on EVE. No. Extract ore from pole and deliver it to Jewel. I'll pass. Adjusted orbit. Okay. So in that case, science data from space around Duna. That's easy enough. So where it... Come on, go into the tracking station. There you go. Okay, so where is Duna? Orbiting Duna. We've got a Mark III there. So let's go ahead and fly that. 
And we'll just do a really quick science data, get ourselves 100k. That basically pays for this. Oh. Oh my. <laughs> oh, the Mark III is so terrible. Okay. That's fine. We're just going to log pressure data, transmit that. Took so long to transmit. <laughs> Well, there, we got ourselves 100k. Back to the Space Center. And let's just double check that that didn't generate a new contract. It may have. We do have like 4 million, so we have plenty of money. <laughs> That's completely fine. Science data from surface of Duna. Okay, we'll do that. That's a. Uh, also really easy, except that I tried to land this thing on Duna like 12 times. Okay, so Duna, here we go. No, that's orbiting Duna. Landed at Duna, here we go. Lathe will be easier to land on than Duna, I believe, because, whoa. Why did it take us back to the space center? KSP, are you okay? Landed at Duna? Fly. Uh-huh. Okay. I think it actually land loaded this time. Yes, it actually loaded this time. Fantastic. Well, that was a little awkward. Okay, let's go ahead and just do a gravity scan, I guess. Transmit that. Is that going to run us out of battery? I think that's going to run us out of battery. I should turn off our lights. Yeah, that's blocked by Duna. Okay, we did get it. Fantastic. 150k. Back to the space center. Let's see if we've got any more free money sitting around. If it loads. There we go. Uh -huh. Hmm. Plant flags? Nah. Nah, we're not going to do that. Okay. Well, it looks like we are then ready to launch another odd one. Whoa. Okay, I clicked on the VAB. There we go. <laughs> We're ready to launch another Odd One Mark V, and this one will be a uh, rather easier insertion. So let's go ahead and open up an Odd One Mark V. And we are going to be bringing this same variant, even with the extra X-16 fuel tank and the four Gigantors. Although... Now that I think about it, we never did an orbit around BOP. We should probably do an orbit around BOP. Let's go ahead and do that. Grab our science from there. We are currently at about 2,000 science. Of course, we don't have anything else to spend science on, except that we can increase our commitment to turning science into additional money, which we also don't need. This might be a pointless exercise. Go ahead and stop time warping. That will be fine. And let's throw a maneuver node here. Just to mark where we are in our orbit when we start. Okay. Slopes. Gravity scan. Transmit. Okay, how are we doing on electric charge? Pretty well, actually. Nice. And realistically, I would like to be pointing, like, surface up. So that way we're always pointing away from the body so that we can make use of our four Gigantors. That would probably be for the best. Okay, let's go ahead and warp around. Ridges. Gravity scan. Transmit. There we go. 
What else do we got? Valley. Okay, transmit that. That one took a little bit to get started. What else do we got? Boy, that's quite the valley. Ridges again, slopes again. Ridges, that's fine. Really don't care about ridges. Slopes, we're done with the slopes. We're also done with the valley. We're also done with the slopes. Peaks, we are done with peaks. Slopes, we are still done with slopes. And still done with ridges. Slopes. I think we've probably gotten everything that we're going to get in this orbit, but maybe not. Slopes. Ridges. Valley. Ridges. Slopes. Peaks. What else do we got? We got a lot of peaks. And we've got slopes. Valley. And finally, our maneuver node. Okay, we're good. Well, I'm going to go ahead and put a cut in here. And next episode, we are going to be putting our satellite in a wide orbit of Joule. See you all then.